Last week, you joined us at a beautiful rural park up by a church just outside the city of Milton Keynes. Ah, why does it make it so difficult? It's just a sticker. It's a window sticker. Hmm. I wonder if I can pop a few wheelies. <laughs> I nearly broke my camera. Oh my goodness, guys. The anxiety is real today. I know that sounds like a horror show, but unfortunately Brexit is Brexit and this is what we've got to do with our animals now. Hi, I'm Daz and she's Bee. We've had our motorhome since June last year and have already had many adventures and made plenty of maverick mistakes on our travels. Our dreams of owning a home in France were shattered after Brexit. Then we failed to move somewhere more rural after our house sale fell through in the UK. We bought Stampy, our 10-year-old motorhome, in the hope that we can live a life less ordinary and explore the UK and Europe with our kids and our greyhound Sammy whenever we can. Please join us as we try new things, make memories as we escape in the motorhome. Right, well in the run up to France, we've had to do a lot of thinking about compatibility, not just in language terms or money, but also gas. We did consider an LPG system using two of the big, bigger well-known brands I've seen out there, but it would involve um, drilling big holes into our gas covered door and fitting a setting. And even then I've read that once abroad, there are garages and rules that prevent you filling up LPG unless your vehicle uses LPG as the main source of energy. So we could go ahead and fit it ourselves uh, for two or 300 pounds and find that we can't even fill it up. There are French uh, gas tanks, like the Cala ones we have in the, in the UK. Uh, again, we'd need new adapters for that. So I've gone for the other option, which is a kit, a 23 pound little kit like this and an old, <laughs> camping gas bottle. Now apparently these are available all over Europe and they're a standard size so rather than going for the French one which then we couldn't use in Germany or Italy the camping gas we should be able to use everywhere so that's the theory. I'm going to have a go at putting this in uh, with the last little bit of gas that's in that particular container. Yes I'll plug it in and then I'll switch on the gas and we'll see if it works. If I had any sense, I would have prepared this earlier. It's like the Cub Scouts, it's the left handed handshake. Right, let's plug it in. Let's turn that off. Righty tighty. Why didn't I put that in first? Like a pro, Daz, like a pro. It's left, it's left. Right, let's turn this on. Okay. just been the end of what was in there. Ah, oh, that one. Daryl, come on. Honestly. You'd think I've never done this before. Okay, so now we're going to listen for a hiss. Yay! And I'm one-handed going to... Come on. Cheap. Lighter. 
What is it with this? That's a lot. Right. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. It's fully lit. So we're now running on camping gas. Yeah, obviously could have done that slightly quicker and slightly better. But for 24 quid instead of 200 odd pounds, We've now got a system, let me turn that off and not waste it because I haven't got much in the tank. We've now got a little system that we can easily, apparently, uh, get refills for anywhere around Europe. So, job done. Just a thousand other jobs to go. As you're thinking about it, ease of use is just one of the factors you've got to consider. Obviously, camping gas might cost more, uh, but also the bottle size they come in means we're probably going to need to do more frequent changeovers. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly we go through bottles and what it ends up costing us. Well, the trouble is now I've made a ring of dirt. I'll have to keep going, except uh, it'll take me ages. I'll help you. So after our Google Translate and a lot of video watching and <laughs> some double checking, I'm still not entirely convinced I know what I'm doing sticking this on. In the video you just seem to stick it in like the old tax disc used to go in, but it, the way it suggests it on here is to take it out, flip it over and then possibly stick it on the outside, which I would have thought would leave it vulnerable to attack. Anyway, the only thing I can do is give it a go and see what happens as we go, but as, as I read earlier, I've got one chance to stick it on and then we have to order it again. It's not expensive, it's a couple of euros, it's just we're running out of time. So it says take this out, flip it over and put it back in, which seems ridiculous. So I'm going to just see if I can do it my way, which is possibly the worst idea I've ever had. Why does it make it so difficult? It's just a sticker. It's a window sticker. I think as long as it's visible and scannable, and apparently the cameras are designed to look for the, the sticker in the bottom right corner, which obviously in France is the passenger side and doesn't, doesn't affect anybody. Right down here, at a wonky angle, it seems. Well, I can't change it because it'll be destroyed. <laughs> right, that'll have to do. One final sticker for today, Camping and Caravanning Club. So we'll stick it on anyway because it might help us out when we're in a fix and also um, they've got some connections abroad too. At least I can't get a circle wonky, right? Bosh! Morning campers. This is not one of those jobs I really wanted to film because I don't know what I'm doing. But with uh, 10 days to go before our trip, I haven't been able to recruit a professional to do it. So this seized hinge, or hinges, I don't know if it's one or both, is something we've got to sort out because we, otherwise we just can't access this side. And we can't truly access everything here from the other side either. So ideally, this needs fixing. And I'm going to give it a go without hopefully breaking anything. Okay, well, we've got ourselves a bit of a situation where I've managed to get this door open a little bit and we've managed to take the screws out of the bodywork but the hinges don't move, they stay there and although these ones here are held in with a uh, an Allen bolt I can't get my set of Allen keys into that space to undo it so I might have to call in the cavalry and call it in I did, in the form of the magic motorhome man, the only person who could see me before we left. We fixed the date in his diary a few days later, but in the meantime, we wanted to head to the Weybridge. You can see here our three and a half ton limit, although the axle gross weight is 3.8. Now we're not planning to leave like this, but we are doing a bit of a trial run, aren't we, Daddy? So it's a Friday afternoon. This time next week, we will be in France. We've been put back two days 
because the whole family have been really, really poorly with a sickness bug. If there hasn't been vomiting, there has been nausea, tummy gripes and general lethargy. It has really wiped us all out, energy and appetite. So Friday, we're all back, almost as we were, and now we've got to get moving. There's a lot still to do. The house isn't ready, we haven't packed the motor home, but what we're making ourselves do now is the Weybridge. We've tried to put as much on the vehicle as possible, including the kids and my packing, all the things you might need in France, such as bikes and paddle boards. We've got all of our laptops on board, we've got all of our children on board, and we've got the dog. And I also know the weight of my 18 year old because he's gonna be joining us for a short jaunt as well. As well as going to the Weybridge, it happens to be a scrap metal merchant as well. So we've got this, it's been behind our door for ages. We're hoping to get that taken off our hands as well. On our way there, I spotted this and thought, that might be a neat idea to have an escort vehicle next time we venture into Wales. On the way there, the kids had lots of questions about our new French map. Well, all except Phoenix. As we pulled into the Weybridge, it occurred to me that if Stanley had any kind of intelligence at all, this must be about the most frightening place we could have brought him. So we've just arrived at the Scrap Metal Merchant slash Weybridge and uh, I can see shimmering in the light all the tiny pieces of metal. Oh, I hope our ties are going to be okay. Aluminium, see if I can offset the cost of the Weybridge with this. <laughs> Bye. Can we have it for free, Thank sir? <laughs> Good luck. I think this is going to hit me in the face. <laughs> oh, here we go. His step toe with his scrap metal. Wrong place to do metal. Across the road and somewhere. Oh dear. Oh, the Weybridge is ten pounds cash. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, sorry, you got any cash? On you? I've got one pound. So hilariously. Nobody told Daz over the phone that you had to pay cash for the Weybridge. I happened to find a pound in the bottom of my wardrobe this morning, so I pocketed it. And Daryl happens to have three pounds on him, which makes four pounds. Let's hope that the scrap metal is worth six. Otherwise, we've got to go and find a cash point. And we're in the middle of an industrial estate. So this could be a slightly frustrating journey. What's How much was it worth? One pound. No, more. Six pounds. No, one pound fifty. I hope all those years of waiting has been worth Ooh. it for that one pound fifty. Right, let's go and find fifty off our ten pound bill. Right, now we've got to go and find, we'll find a cash point. point. Excellent. Yeah. We're at Morrison's. We're about to get some money out so we can pay for the waverage. But of course, with children on board, they're all demanding food. Herbie I'm not running around looking for herby sausages. Herby sausages. What happened to the rest of our Friday, Daz? <laughs> Where's your cash point, Morrison's? I've got Impost and eBay, but no cash point. The result of the Weybridge was a little bit crushing because uh, when I took the ticket off the guy after the faff of having to pay in cash and go and find a cash point and come back, I was thinking, oh, they've marked that they've put my maximum weight in there. It's slightly off, but they put the maximum weight in there. I wonder which one is the actual weight of the day. And I had to ask the guy, and it turned out the one I was, I was thinking was the maximum, or near enough, was the actual weight. So it, it, on our three and a half ton van, it came in at 3.44. So we've only got 60 kilos spare, which is not good, because I drove there on a reserve tank. We emptied the water, um, and we haven't got a fridge full of soy milk and avocados and courgettes. So... Which we won't have in France. We're going to be no, really disciplined. Sorry, full of onions, garlic and baguettes and croissants. B went off to a forum. Put a post I went in. to Wandering Bird and yes. they're fa fabulous. There's a wonderful uh, community mm. of like-minded peeps, all of whom are massively experienced in spending huge amounts of time in France. Yeah. And we got lots of advice. Some of it was, don't worry about it. You won't get way to. Actually, you know, you probably need to make sure. But they gave us lots of advice about how to keep weight down. So we've got some ideas, haven't we, babe? Yeah. A very good suggestion actually was just to hire bikes when we get to places. So um, what we thought is we could, but obviously with a family of four kids, 
uh, and two adults, that's going to add up to quite a lot. So what we thought we could do is reduce the number of bikes we've got. And if we really need an extra bike, then maybe we could hire that. So we've got uh, my old rigid uh, mountain bike on here that we're going to weigh. And we've got uh, on two loan. folding bikes. Yeah, on loan. Well, only one of them's in the van at the moment. A folding bike is in the van. So we're going to weigh up the difference between those two. One of those will have to stay at home. One of those will come with us. And then we can start picking away all the other bits inside the van that we think we can get away with. So off comes Daz's pride and joy. This is my, this is my paper round bike. God, that's really served you well, hasn't it? So it's about... 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long paper round. Yeah, I almost like to <laughs> And a hard one, that. <laughs> right, let's get on the scales. Mm. Yes, that's only about 15 kilos. Okay, I reckon the um, folding bikes are more than that. Now we love the idea of the folding bikes but they are not sort of lightweight ones. If it weighs more than Daz's paper round bike then we know the answer to this. So which one is heavier? Quick paper bit of math. Bike. Paper round bike is heavier. Yeah. Really? Heartbreaking. I was just thinking as long as this isn't Apollo 13. <laughs> It's a good look. It kind of looks a bit stranger things. <laughs> so the brakes work. Oh my god. Ah! That okay. saddle's cutting in. How's it feel then? Uh, I feel like um, I'm in the easy rider. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the look. Hmm. I wonder if I can pop a few wheelies. <laughs> I wouldn't attempt it. It's got six gears. It's practically a mountain bike. It's got to be better than your... Easy. Yeah, it's got to be better than your original Raleigh. <laughs> anyway, well that's job done then. It is nearly 30 degrees today and we've just gone and got our animal health certificate from Past Pets in Havant. Now Past Pets is a really reasonable price for your animal health certificates. It costs us £99. I know that sounds like a horror show, but unfortunately Brexit is Brexit and this is what we've got to do with our animals now. So he's now perfectly legal for coming to France with us. So he's had his rabies jab and that has been, that did, he had his rabies jab, that was back in April. And now, now he's had the certificate, we have to travel in the next week, I believe, but you've, there's some really good Facebook groups that help you with the animal health certificate and help you with the rules and regulations and things that you've got to stick to. Because when he comes back from France, he's going to have to have a worming tablet and that's got to be administered um, at least 24 hours before he leaves France, but four days before. Um, so there's a little window where he's got to have that worming tablet. Um, and of course he has to have had his rabies injection before he goes to France, but it has to be a certain period of time beforehand. So now we've got a 12 page document, which has been signed and stamped, and it has details about his microchip, it has details about the trip itself and when his rabies jab was administered, his gender, his breed, etc. So we've got all of that information on this 12 page document and there's a particular place um, on page four of the document where the vet in France is going to have to fill out the information about the worming tablet that is administered. Um, so it's quite uh, a bureaucracy, it's quite a lot of bureaucracy, but this is how it's got to go now. And hopefully it'll be fairly straightforward, but I've joined an AHC Facebook group, which has been really useful. They've got a great big map of France and all the different vets and prices that you can go to for the worming tablet before um, you come back into the UK, but it's all got to be done in that small little window. So we're legal now, that's great news. We can go home and do our last bit of preparation. Well, after the slightly devastating news that we were nearly at our limit, B went through the inside of the van looking for stuff to throw away, and I went through the garage with the relatively few things that we took to the Weybridge. I spotted these retro mud mats. Well, they can come out for sure. Oh my goodness, guys, the anxiety is real today. I'm just walking one of the keys to one of the doors round to one of our cleaners who doesn't live far from us. We're two days before lift off and I can't quite control my anxiety. There's a, a lot at stake and we're stepping into the unknown. I haven't left my teenager for this amount of time ever before and it feels a bit scary. He's coming to join us in you know, two weeks or so, but it still feels really frightening. 
and I know he's got his dad's house to be in but I can't offer our house because there's Airbnb customers in and out the entire time in fact in July and August it's almost a constant flow which means I've got to be on it with communication to people using our house and making sure that I'm speaking to the cleaners too I can sense my concentration isn't as good as it normally is because I'm making simple mistakes on the road because the day is so so busy but at least I know that Sammy is legal now but it's all those little things that could go wrong if we don't pay attention and stay focused that's what's frightening I think that's where the anxiety is coming from so normal service will resume soon so that's it key dropped off I keep having to shake the anxiety out of my arms and you know having had anxiety in the past it's not nice and I've kind of learned how to deal with it and I've changed my life so that I don't have as many responsibilities as I did so taking on board Airbnb and having a dog and continuing to home educate as well as making crazy decisions like leaving the country for three months it has quite a lot of ramifications and yeah it's going to be okay I think it's just where it's coming to a head right now I don't even think the kids realise this is the last night tonight that they're going to spend in the house because tomorrow night they're sleeping at Grandma and Grandad's. And on Friday night, we've got a whole new family staying. And on Saturday. <laughs> oh, I hope they like it. Right, next, on to the slightly controversial subject of tyre pressure. Now online, some people are recommending 80 PSI, but I've gone for the maximum tyre pressure of 69. Now, you won't be able to smell this or feel this but that is hot and it smells of burning and I've already had one other cheap pump melt on me earlier on let's see how we're getting on mm, so time consuming maybe I should go to the garage just a little bit more Sadly, the pump didn't reach the back tyres, so I had to get the old manual pump out. Right, I've just had a call from the garage. They've got Stampy's parts. Now I've grabbed my lunch. B's gonna follow me in the other car so I can come back and hopefully we'll get this all sorted by tomorrow because we're running out of time. Well, that was an interesting journey. I've just dropped Stampy off behind me there at the Magic Motorhome guys barn out here in the beautiful South Downs. But um, everything seems to be going against me. I left in an emergency. Stampy had no fuel, okay, that's probably my fault. But then um, my truck sat nav fell off and started sliding around on the dash. My dash cam didn't have an SD card in it, so I wasn't recording anything for you guys. Uh, then the cupboards, at least two of the cupboards, started opening and shutting randomly, even though I stopped to close them. Unfortunately, this lovely route through the South Downs goes this way and that way, side to side. So it just kept opening, whatever happened. B's message to say the car she's following me in has had a funny five minutes, so not looking forward to that. Yeah, and worst of all, the passenger wing mirror, which I so happily managed to fix some months ago in another vlog, disappeared within the first five minutes somewhere near our house. So I'm hoping I can recover that on the way back. And in the meantime, while I wait for B, I'm going to keep myself busy in this garden centre. I nearly broke my camera. Not just my camera, that's my phone and my second brain. So not everything's going to plan today and the signs are against me. However, B did manage to pick me up and take me home, dropped her off. I then spun my car around and went out on the hunt for my missing wing mirror. And the good news is I found it just down the road, about a minute away from the house. Now, luckily, it's only got a few scratches on it. So I think I might just be able to push that back on. <laughs> That's not so good, is it? How many years bad luck do you get for smashing the foot? Mind you, I didn't smash it. It's probably uh, the number 37 bus and a few uh, locals. 
Anyway, that's a goner. I mentioned it to the garage. Uh, he didn't have a spare. I've looked online. I have to buy the whole unit. I just can't buy the glass. I have to buy the whole wing mirror. And that's about £65. The best delivery they can do is the day before we leave. So do I take the risk? I don't know. The great thing is, though, um, the guy, Andy, at Magic uh, Motorhome Man, he called me back just a couple of hours after we dropped off the van and they'd already done it. What they've managed to do, I'll take you outside and show you, it's great. What they've managed to do is, with, because the hinge was actually part of the frame, they thought they'd have to spend quite a number of hours taking the whole frame out of the side of Stampy, um, taking apart the, the hinge and then putting in the new hinge. What they've managed to do, out of a three leaf um, hinge, they've managed to take the two end pieces and attach them to the existing centerpiece that's fixed onto the frame on Stampy, and then also use the plastic pin that came with the new hinge, so we shouldn't get the seizing again. So it isn't that aluminium and steel reaction that these hinges suffer from. So let me just show you how easy things are now. Right, so before, this wouldn't come out beyond about this far. And now, it's right up, just like the other side. Here's the new hinge. Old hinge, new hinge, and then the new plastic inserts here and here. Uh, the only damage that was suffered was a few scratches along the old hinge here. But to be honest, that's a lot less damage than I would have done. And considering it's next to this beast, it doesn't really show, does it? And there's a great big scratch here too, so it's not like that stands out. But that does now mean we've got full access to this side. So we can put all our stuff in. And boy, there's a lot of stuff. Let's just try it for size. What do you reckon? The thing is, it might look like I've got a thousand cars behind me when there's just one. Well, that's all for now. Join us next time when we take a trip under the sea and begin our epic 12-week trip around France. Until then, thanks for watching. <laughs>